Hey, it's time. Welcome back to the third part in the three-part series of basic blending with Adobe Illustrator for beginners. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, so now um, we know that we have uh, this column grouped and that column is grouped. Uh, but the arches aren't, so we want to get in on one arch and hold the shift key down and get the other one if possible. Might not be able to do that. One way you can try it though is to hold the shift key down and just drag a marquee box across that part of both. And when you see question marks on your stroke palette, that means that you probably got both. To double check, you can go to your layers palette and just look and you can see these little blue boxes next to both arches that means that they're both selected so you, you achieve your goal now hold the shift key down and select the columns as well now you've got the arches and the columns selected now let's group them control G we want to group them so that we can uh, tell them uh, all three elements what to do and what are we going to tell them to do well, we're going to scale a copy again. We're going to scale a copy with the scale tool and we're going to put our um, cursor at the vanishing point. Hold the Alt key down and click down. We'll get this dialog box and we're going to say um, how, you know, what, what scale do you want it to be? And we want to make it 60. So type in a uniform scale of 60 and hit copy and what happened? We got another set of columns and arches. So what we want to do is hit control D to do it again until we have columns and arches going all the way into infinity. Okay, that's nice. But, huh? Right, we see that the most recently made ones are, you know, in the way. So, and another thing, it looks like scale strokes and effects was not selected. So, uh, let's check on that. Control Z until we get all the way back to the first one. If you don't have scale strokes and effects um, selected, then you're not going to be able to scale it down right. So, let's try it again. Uh, go to the vanishing point, hold the alt key down and click and no scale strokes and effects was not selected so we want to select that and then hit copy. What will happen now oops, let me try that again, I didn't have the right number in there okay, we want 60 not 85 alright, and scale strokes and effects and copy alright, and control D all the way back but you'll notice that the most recently made columns and arches or at least the arches are still in front of the older ones and it looks weird it's like an optical illusion so how do we correct that it's really easy um, we go to the layers palette right and what we do is we select all of the arches by holding the shift key down and just clicking on each arch on the layers palette and as you can see they're becoming selected on the screen as well now what we're gonna do is go to this flyout uh, menu on the layers palette and there's an or uh, there's a, a command that should say reverse order oh but it's not letting it's not offering me that normally it would for some reason it isn't now I must have selected too many things or something. Oh, I know what happened. I've got the, I've got this selected too. Okay, Let's see if I can deselect that. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Okay, let me try this again. I want to click on that. And the reason why we want to do a reverse order is because um, we're not going to move them around. We're just going to uh, rearrange them um, 
so that the most recently made one is in the back and it just looks better that way okay I think I'm selecting these uh, improperly so let me check I'll come out here and I'll just select instead of the blue box I'll just select oops okay I'll select the bottom columns and arches and then select the top one while holding the shift key down and it selects all of the columns and arches go here and now I can reverse order now watch what happens here now the most recently made ones are in the back okay and it makes more sense now visually so you can actually create effects through your layers palette that's why I always say think in layers because that will save you a lot of time and what is time? Time is money. Okay, I'm going to make a nice rectangle here and create a background for this illustration. Oh, look, it's framed. That's really not what I want, so I'm going to click on the last fill created. And I'm going to knock the dashed line out of that stroke. Knock it back down to, say, 2. I don't want this color. I want red. Red would go well with this. And I'm going to send it all the way to the back. Control, shift, left bracket. I created a uh, rectangle and filled it with color. And uh, it didn't go all the way back because I did not have the selection tool selected. So now I'm going to send it all the way to the back. Control, shift, left bracket. Okay, what is the problem here? Why aren't you going all the way back? Let's try this again. I think I'm running out of memory, which can happen, so I'm going to um, save this. save there we go now it went all the way back I just needed to save that's all all right and actually that was a lot easier than uh, the beach scene but um, I like to close with that and let's give it a name. It's Columns and Arches. And put your name there. Mr. Dries. Uh, uh, uh. And Control S to save. and print it out pin it up you're good to go pretty cool stuff huh um, thanks for sticking with me I hope you enjoyed it um, I have a number of lessons to share with you on the basics of Adobe Illustrator for beginners how to draw with your computer Really cool stuff. Anyway, this uh, concludes the third episode in this three-part series. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until the next video, take care.